<laughs> Greetings. Welcome, my friends, to the very secret plan. With your host, Captain Sweep. And Jeremiah. Otherwise known as Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> So what's happening in the Very Secret Plan in Salt Spring? I've heard big things are happening. Big things are happening in the Very Secret Plan. I think certain people are starting to turn their attention towards the plan in ways that we've been waiting many years for. Uh -huh. It's quite exciting to see. Who are these such people? Uh, the Master Samurai Akemi uh -huh. is one of the such people. This is, yes, her totem animal. You have brought it out. Oh. I think there's certain people who are finally seeing the genius of the plan. Ah. It's only taken 10 years. <laughs> I'm about to die, goddammit. <laughs> By the time it gets going, I'm dead. <laughs> We've still got a couple of years to wrangle you. <laughs> Captain Sweep quits from the plan as soon as it starts to get going. Well, that's basically my plan. <laughs> and off. You guys go do it. Front lines. <laughs> I'll be in the back with my friends. Hmm. Yeah, it's quiet. <laughs> uh, it's just funny how it all comes around, you know. It just seems like this is the, it's, this is the moment, this is the time where the mediums, the platforms, the systems, the tools, beam, the... the, the your, the inflow, like the readiness, there's just something that is ready. It's like pregnant and potent in the field. And the very secret plan, I think, is the only thing that can actually, that'll actually work. I've been trying to tell you. I know you have for a long time. <laughs> I like it. It's like in the last person to get it is going to be Zamir. <laughs> and he'll be the one who gets all the credit. He'll go, I yeah. have an idea. <laughs> I'm telling two words. Website. <laughs> it's funny, the only two things we actually need. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. That's the problem. Yeah, I know. <laughs> got all these cards, got all these things. Who gives a shit? Just yeah. Good website, some marketing, maybe a business card. Yeah. So Akemi's in, or I mean, what, what I've heard, uh, what's going on with uh, Akemi and uh, what have you heard? <laughs> Word travels fast. Clearly, who the hell is telling you what, where, what, and how? <laughs> who do you think? Who do I think? Zamir? My mom? Only okay. one, only one, there's only one person left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh-huh. Well, you see, I thought last week we were going to chat. I was going to chat with her. She told me we were going to chat. Me and you were going to chat. No, but you were like, for the chat. I'm not chatting with all of you. Must chat individually. Can't chat as a collective. And I was like, fine, whatever. She wanted to be here on the call today. Wait, you're talking about me or her? You. I didn't say that. I said I would talk to you and Akemi. I would talk to you. I would talk to Akemi. I had no problem with any of it. I was just waiting to talk to somebody and no one talked to me. <laughs> I'm sitting there waiting for the call. I get this little message saying, things are going great. We're in this tight container. And that was fucking it for the week. <laughs> no, no sweep. Uh, we're a little off. Uh, we're going to reschedule. So anyway, we had a little chat about that because, of course, I brought it up. <laughs> And then some other things came out. Yes, I see that. Yeah, no, we're finding a new connection between us. It seems really beautiful, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are on camera, but I guess this is a very secret plan. We're going to air all our shit. We might as well get used to it. People want to hear all the juicy details, don't you? I, I'm not really. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've had enough of other people's romance for my lifetime. Um, Things, such things need privacy. But you are the love prophet. I know, but I I'm love bringing prophet. my heart to you and you're smacking me away. <laughs> Deep down, I don't care, okay? <laughs> but that's why you're the prophet. I know. 
<laughs> I want to talk about 9-11. You want to talk about your love life. It's like 9-11 was so 10 years ago. I, 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 I. So anyway, I mean, that's, uh, that's like, uh, worthy of the magic bell. The magic bell is switch point between conversation types. <laughs> Nice, uh, How about nice, the, nice like, Zoom background. What happened to your Inflamatrix Zoom? If you're not going to use them, who else is going to use them? I know. <laughs> I was, uh, we had a meeting, me and James were having a meeting with this guy down in the States. We both had the two frames and he was there and it was like, all right, we we're both in black t-shirts. Looked pretty good. It had a little bit of consistency. Look, look who's here. here. Sweep in the vicinity. Ah, it's Mr. Zamir. Sweepers. Que pasa, amigo? Let me find the right background for Zamir. Do you have a wet blanket background? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Doom. Now let me just. Oh, that was the old me. That was the old me. Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> Did something happen since our last call or what? Yeah. Oh, good. What happened? Oh, I know what happened. What happened? Hasn't the romance come into your life? Uh, some of it. But I drew this card today. Contentment. Very nice. Yeah. So that, that means you're content at the moment, even though you said it's some of it? Uh, well, I, I, with my relationship with Melina, we'll have to see how it goes. She's away for a few months. Ah. And uh, she had some expectations I couldn't quite meet. <laughs> <laughs> like uh showing like communication her what? <laughs> like sending her a text message every now and then <laughs> acknowledging her presence when she's in the room <laughs> I, I can't meet these they're too hardcore for me ah. please do not text message <laughs> i do but it's more the way that it came about yeah no. <clears throat> Jeez, i didn't know this was gonna be a love profit call so is, is the ping pong table set up I, I like your background. It's exactly where I'm at in my life right now. Curiosity and investigation of what my best next step is on the path really? of awakening. Did you notice the spelling mistake? <laughs> yep. Curiosity. Uh, I did notice it on the Patanjali one that you sent me, but it's always been that way. Oh, really? Yeah. That was a pretty good map of that one, isn't it? It, it, it was. I mean, it's, it's definitely uh, nice to see them side by side those those two um what are they called <laughs> he hasn't looked at the map <laughs> I, have, I have looked at it he said it's nice you know to see uh yeah side by side what is it what was on the map <laughs> another uh another map from the line he had the five, like, you know. he had the five vrithis and the five kleshas yeah uh, yeah I, I thought that and then put your yoga thing here a little picture of zamir down there but I think that your um, your divination tool is awesome. I think it's got a lot of potential. Uh -huh. The online one, which is a remedy. Yeah, it does have a lot of potential. Yeah, yeah. And I think framing it on that conceptual blending lens is so potent. You know, your cognitive landscapes, or your basically, I think it's something that you uh, really excel at is conceptual blending. And there's, you know, for what that thing was so interesting about that talk is. Remember you were saying like NASA wanted to, um, I don't know if you watched the whole talk, how much of it you watch, but yeah, I did. he was saying like, you know, NASA wanted to figure out a way to do something. They were going to ditch their Hubble telescope because it wasn't able to do something. And they had this creativity guy come in who does conceptual blending. And he's like, okay, let's go into the, let's go into the bathroom. And they took something from the bathroom. And from there, they were like, what if we map this onto here? How is this going to help solve the problem? And then they use that to help solve an epic problem with the Hubble telescope. Mm -hmm. He says that a lot of, you know, this conceptual blending is basically taking an outside force, bring an outside concept or something to stimulate a whole new way of looking at a problem. And that blending of concepts gives rise to the creativity to solve it. And I mean, your tool can do that so well. You're right. Yeah, no, it's, I hadn't heard that categorization before. So that was really good. Yeah, that is good. Conceptual um, blending. Yeah. Also, his uh, communicate his new game board with two people sitting side by side. Really good one. 
Really, really, really good one. I see it. Yeah. You have to take off your Zoom background, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this one's awesome. You created actually a game board. So on the on this side, you sort of have a a thing that tells you your emotional state. Yeah, you can actually feedback real time. Yeah, where you're at in the conversation, which is so awesome. Yeah. And then the other side, I think you didn't have this on the other. You you track your insights, ahas, breakthroughs, and level up. Oh, yeah. you redid it. Yeah. And then you have the value combo type and then in the middle you have each has a, a flow and an individual and yeah then in the center you have the harmony and the synergy yeah and we did a whole session on this for the rights of nature and it was really powerful what came out and then i redid the harmony cards redid the harmony cards so they're kind of bigger and then yeah. the synergy lens can fit on it so that you can just you know so you can just fit it in the oh, middle yeah so then, then you have that as a center point yeah then you have both people their flow and choice lenses convo type and value type and then you just each turn you turn over a card turn over a card turn over a card if you get an insight you match it if your emotional thing changes you change <laughs> it so it, you know it's, it's very versatile for uh Condos. I haven't it's tried good. that much, but you remind and I did it and it worked pretty good. Did, yeah. It's probably the best one to one conversational board or experience I've ever had in terms of having structure and flow like that. It's really powerful. What do you do with it? I like it. With somebody else? No, it's me. It's a two person thing. Oh. Yeah. I'd like to prototype more and more of those. Um, actually, we're tomorrow night, I'm talking to Luke, and we've been talking about this emergence summit that I was telling, talking to you about. And um, he's going to go out and seek funding for it. And I'd like you to be on the payroll for it. Um, and us to really have a conversation about what it looks like to bring you into that and to actually use those tools and to structure real outputs and outcomes from a, an actual summit that we do. And I think we're, we're deciding how much is on and how much is offline. But I think, you know, if it's online, we can also use and help develop some of these tools online and use it as an opportunity to do that. So I think that's one of my next major deliverable points with us in our co-creativity okay of actually getting the, the the tools online um which is why partly i wanted a kemi here but um we'll book another call for it um and then yeah very secret plan so what's happening you said she said something about tiktok well you said and we said i mean i just had a massive insight because we have you know dharmic media and we had this whole team and all we're doing right now is structuring outputs. So we have intros and outro animations. We have them for different contexts, different themes. And I have one for my meditation, for my poetry, for my music, for my this, and I'm structuring them. And she shows me this cool TikTok from her friend and it's like introducing characters and it like goes black and it goes a character name and it goes and it's like, I'm like, oh, TikTok and all the tools have finally caught up with actually what's needed. Before we were trying to do it with the SLR cams and da, 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 and porting it here and then a lot of manual editing. Now the phones can literally do it all. And all you need is specific templates, templates, font templates, intro templates, how characters are introduced, templates, transitions. If you can get if we can get a template set for a very secret plan mm. and a way that it happens, we can launch like full on shows on TikTok. And that's not happening. Every TikTok is independent, random 30, yeah. 60 second content. Yeah. Nobody's creating sequential narrative yeah. content and yeah. nobody's giving a template to other characters to then use to actually create TikToks to use a common branding methodology to interweave stories together. And I'm like, that's where the rubber's got to meet the road on the very secret plan. I like it. Like every time a character's in, like we introduce them and give them the template set so they can start creating and hashtag the very secret plan, mm. you know? So it becomes this kind of like show. Well, and you can also, you can split the screen and watch a video and then have somebody watching it. That's a new and thing. React that, it. Yeah. 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 So each of us can watch each other's video. <laughs> <laughs> not good. <laughs> uh, this guy's not part of the plan. I invented the plan. He's nuts. Just go look at his Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get so trashed. You just discredit each other. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going well in the plan, these bastards. <laughs> I had something that came to me recently now that I'm talking to you, I sort of feel how it's something that you've sort of been thinking about or seeding for a while in some ways. And um, I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> that was our knowing glance. 
But uh, one of my clients, he's 15 years old and he has a condition called, well, he has OCD, but it's kind of like a, at least is what they're labeling him as, is it's called existential OCD. He's very like empathic, like he feels all the stuff that's sort of happening in the world around him. And essentially he's uh, been in and out of hospital a few times now. And he, his, his main thing is he wants to be sure that he has eternal consciousness. And he's created an elaborate system in his mind, sort of like a, a whole series of rules of how he needs to consistently move through certain patterns and undo certain actions that he feels may compromise his guarantee of eternal consciousness. So he has to walk in and out of doors in certain ways. He has to, sometimes he, he's, he has one of them that he's finally getting over now, which he tries to undo thought. So he has a thought, he has to undo the thought he had before the thought to go back so that, that the karma basically of that thought doesn't cling on to him. Like it's, it's a very intense situation, but he's like deeply inquiring into the nature of like belief, perception, reality, like he's interested about God, but he's had no real support or guidance, right? Uh, his name is Simon. No, you don't know him. And uh, he, his dad is brilliant. Both his parents graduated from MIT. So he has like a super high level of intelligence, but it's like his mind is a knife that's sort of coming and cutting him against him. And he's had some early, you know, all, a lot of this stuff is rooted in childhood trauma of lack of feeling of safety, support, and connection. But right now, one of his main challenges is like he doesn't have people to work with to talk about this stuff, right? Like, you know, the mainstream institutions are trying to basically like give him drugs or put him in a home. And, you know, sometimes his, his, sometimes his breakouts, his compulsions are really bad. Like he gets really activated, like screaming, thinking he's going to die, like you know, he has psychotic episodes, but he's so kind. He's very sweet. He's really trying to inquire into like consciousness and how the mind works. And there's other kids out there like him, like kids that are basically stuck. What, what he was telling me, because he's on these chat groups. And he says that there's a there's almost this existential angst coming a lot of young people because religion has fallen away. They don't really know about God. They're caught between materialism and the most common um, worldview right now that young people are adopting that are philosophizing is around the idea that we live in a simulation and this idea that we're living in a simulation actually brings up a lot of existential angst for them because they feel completely disconnected and out of control right and so I was like you know I, I was thinking of that bramble platform and I was going to ask his dad because he's paying me to work with him but I was like maybe he could fund this where we have like an online kind of Bramble school. They have a little avatar, they come in and we have someone come in once a week or twice a week. And they, you know, talk to these youth and answer their questions, right? Around life, around consciousness, around energy, around yoga, around science. I mean, you would be a great teacher. Satyan, Ram could speak around hacking reality, understanding the Vedic view of reality. There's so many things that these kids like are interested in, but they don't have a place where other older intelligent people are there that can just like talk to them or answer questions. And I was like, that would be an amazing service to these kids, you know, to have a place like that where they could come in and have that conversation with people. Is it, what? Tell me what Bramble is. What's it's a, it's a platform that um, I think I shared it with you before. It's like, you know, you have a little avatar, you go in, I showed you, you one. And you move around? And you move around. But now they've made it so that it's free, so anybody can create a Bramble room. Really? Yeah. Fuck. That's a great, I mean, that's, I thought that was the. You can name it what you level. want. I was thinking Simon School, but I mean, if you call it Planetary Guardians, if you, well, that's what you want to call it. But I was, I was thinking something along the lines really of, first being a place where you know these young people can come and interact with others that we have like a a little page like you know this week it'll be this person this week it'll be this person and they show up and they get to meet other people and hang out and talk afterwards well or you could create a schedule a weekly schedule where each of the teachers gives a certain amount of time to show up there and exactly. then you just give the schedule to the kids who can show up wherever they want when they want exactly yeah, i love you guys yeah, i have limited time yeah. yeah you guys can take this call different yeah we can do it later <laughs> later 
But I was going to float it to his dad and just say like, hey, would you be there? So then we have like a, I don't know, some kind of budget for teachers to come and well, talk. Yeah, yeah. Why, why don't we uh, get to have another chat about that? Because that's that sounds like a lot big conversation to, to flush out. Yeah, I think starting it simple that we already have access to the room for free, get a little thing going, you know, it can start with just Simon and then he can invite friends, put it out on Facebook to all the people like, hey, do you know any teenagers or kids that are interested in this stuff? They can come in and you know, learn these things, right? Or talk or meet other kids. Okay, that's the worst marketing strategy I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> well, you can be on the marketing side. <laughs> right? I mean, I just don't, I don't, I'm not like, it's not a money making thing. It's more, I don't know how, it just has to, I don't know how the word of these kind of things get out. I don't I'm know. Kids, first of all, don't post on Facebook anymore. One. Do it on TikTok, I guess. Yeah. Two, you don't be like, hey guys, I've got this really cool thing. <laughs> Come join me. No. That's not how things work anymore. Yeah. I'm not tapped into that love, that marketing level. Yeah. Yeah. He uses Discord a lot. So he says a lot of young kids get onto Discord. Yeah, they do. They want to chat, they want to debate. Discord is a great place. So he was, I was thinking that he goes on Discord and say like, he goes into, cause he goes into debates like political, politics, philosophy, consciousness, da, 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 da. And then he can have it so that be like, you know, you can come in here and participate in it. Cause people are already there on the platforms who are looking to have those conversations. I mean, if, if you tied it into the different worldviews, I think it'd be interesting to have a different expert in each worldview in different rooms. And so you go into, you know, um, Jeffrey's room and he unloads his Hindu stuff. You go into Plantar totally. Guardian. That's where I would be sort of like and each of us again, you know, timing and worldview. I, I, I like the battle of the world. I always like that. Yeah. He's constantly doing that. Right. So he'll go and you're like, well, yesterday he was like, okay, I finally solved uh, objective morality. And he gave me his sort of understanding and solution and breakdown of objective morality. I was like, damn, that's pretty good for a 15 year old. He's sort of like, he really thought through it. Objective morality was it? Yeah, exactly. But, you know, there are kids out there that are really smart that, you know, are out there thinking and doing about this stuff. But for him, it turned into an existential crisis. But, uh, you know, other kids are also really smart. They want to think and talk about these things. You go to high school, it's kind of like retarded level stuff. Yeah. You want to solve the kids' existential crisis, give them five million of the Find God really quick. Rumble's great too. Yeah. I did talk to his dad about that. Because, you know, I don't, I don't mean to sound trite, is that, you know, like intellectually solving an existential crisis is difficult, but experientially it's much more powerful. Yeah. I tried to get support. I mean, I tried to get Nadine to hook me up with uh, someone who could get me pure MDMA for him. He couldn't do it. In Boston? Oh. I don't know how to get it there. Um, His dad doesn't know how to get that stuff. I just not know where to get DMT and MDMA and stuff in Boston, and this kid can take it safely. Okay. It's only 15 years old. I do know. Oh, this is hard, but, but I do know a, a lot of my friends are doing um, MAPS, working with MAPS. So I'm doing assisted ketamine therapy. Ketamine is like, a lot of you know ketamine well, but assisted ketamine therapy has been used in a really powerful yeah, but MAPS is, I think they're based on the West Coast, and I don't think they take kids, anyone under 18. That's the challenge that he has. Yeah. I like, I mean, I, I, I did a thing with kids this morning. There was a entrepreneur's camp at uh, the Visionary Hub, and there was five kids from 8 to 12 in a one-week program that Lori put on. And uh, they brought me in as the wizard, and they, they chose values from the from the, from the deck and they pulled three each and, and then we converted them into superpowers for their business and then i took a, the, their idea for the business made a map took the three values and then i sort of changed the the languaging to fit kind of kids and superpowers and then you know made them a nice map and the kids i, I think they love it um, they must so love it so they were their kids working on businesses yeah, like, I mean, it, you know, it's very, you know, eight to ten ideas is probably too young. I mean, the ideas was she wants to make a unicorn doll, a car powered by water. Yeah. 
food company, soap company, and uh, I don't remember the other one. Um, oh, he went YouTube star. So, you know, it's just the same thing, you know, maybe high school students at creating an entrepreneur's program for them. I think that would be. Totally. Because that's what they need, powerful. right? Aspiration, empowerment, to feel like the, as millennials that they can, if they can create what they want, right? Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I think that, the reason they're la- they, they have these existential crises is, is they don't have a sense of purpose. They're not on a team. They're not around, like, just like you say, they're not around people. Like at that age, you need to be in a sports team. You need to be on a, yeah. sports team. you need to be something outside where you're using your physical body a lot rather than just using your mind. Cause I yeah. think you go crazy when you're just using their mind. They're too smart. They're around their screens all the time. They're not getting a balanced life. They're not having normal social intercourse around sports. And I, I think that's, whether it's basketball or ping pong or anything, right? It's just get them playing something that's fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they just got too much time by themselves to think about things that, man, at that age, you really shouldn't be thinking about it much. Yeah, we'll try telling that to Simon. (laughs) Yeah, no, but I, I, you know, if you want to set up anything, I'd I'd be fascinated to talk to to anyone about anything, really. I'd like to work with young people, so. I'm sure he'd love to meet you. I was thinking you would you know, he'd ask you some questions that you would find pretty compelling. Actually, he's a smart kid. I, I, I'd love to. I'd love to see what they do with the maps, you know. I really yeah. Would. Yeah, like, he I does it all in his mind. Right I, I, I think if they, to me, if you, you, they're trying to make sense of the world and, and how can you with multiple worldviews and so much insanity online, right? That's they're exactly just watching what he's doing. insanity. Yeah, he's what he's going through so many different worldviews and he's trying to compare them all to see what's true. And it's, uh, it's, it's you know, kind of, it's been challenging for him. But I'm just thinking uh, me and Ramayan were supposed to meet for uh, lots of things and uh, it's a little bit sidetracked here. I'm just wondering yeah. if we could move back to that. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. I'll talk to you later. Okay, but let's let's talk about it soon because it sounds fascinating. Okay, awesome. Take care. All right, good to see you. Hey, bro. The love prophet has subscribed to you on YouTube. Man. <laughs> so I, I think we, you know, with the TikTok, I think we got about, you know, the, the very secret plan with Planetary Guardians in some manner. Um, I'm honestly all in for the very secret plan right now. Yeah. Fuck yeah. everything. Yeah, I mean, planetary guardians is too prescriptive right now. Um, I think planetary guardians is like where you pull like the Earth warriors and those who are like already in the know or already like on the ship or on the team. They're like that's the ship. The very sacred plan is something that can reach everywhere and all streams and all ages and all types and create a, a viral mimetic that people are can plug into and the way we do it is the way that you you know you've always thought of as well where you get them to places where people love games right so you have to make the whole thing on some level like the game and like we talked about this last time about like we even mapped some of the stuff about like what are first things that we could give people inside of like the plan Mm. how do people participate and then you know we can even use things like nfts now right like people can unlock very secret plan nfts by going to specific locations and by doing specific Mm. things right and by like um it's almost like a soft in to get people to kind of participate inside of a narrative and planetary guardians is like you're on the ship okay i got you i got you yeah no no i I get it and i like it um i mean i've always thought the very secret plan at its core was a web tv show starter program system yeah so like everyone that comes into the plan, they have their own show, but then there's a show of what they're doing together if they do anything together. Exactly, but, then- but you, see, you see how TikTok is basically like that? Like TikTok is basically everybody has their own show now. Like yeah. it's already happened and everybody's creating their own show and the yeah. next generation are like in it. Like we don't need to like make that happen anymore. No. Like, <laughs> you know, like, so that part's there. So it plan has gone past us. <laughs> <That> is, exactly. <laughs> we are behind the plan. Exactly. So now it's like, oh, our only job is to weave the narrative and to create a structure. And what I don't see on TikTok is this it doesn't exist. Nobody's creating real shows. 
Yeah. Nobody's creating intro, outro, title scenes. Nobody's weaving the thread. Nobody's creating like 30 TikTok episodes, series that are, that's not happening, which just boggles my mind. Yeah. It's everybody independent, one shot, everything shaking your ass. Yeah. Spreading some knowledge. And so I'm like, there's a huge opportunity to actually do something really intelligent here and to strategize it properly. Well, well, I mean, to me, to, to, you can create vile trends quite easy. You see the one where they, I can't even do it, but they dance, like they, they got this certain dance where these five guys are doing this dance and there's a fucking, you know, within a week, a million people are doing it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like really coming up with certain things that become, you know, the, uh, the gestures of comedy, right? Like, we, you know, I, I think we got to think about who, because I have 20 people, right? I mean, what I need to do is I'm going to send to you <laughs> what I've actually done because I haven't actually shown you. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a website. I've got like a bunch of videos that are quite linked to it. So I, I need to, add, plus, guess what happened? I just got access to, uh, remember that program that had a circle-based interface? Newell, whatever, yeah. New map? Yeah. I just got in touch with the guy. I ha I've been trying to get in touch with him, you know, for a couple of years. He gave me access. And guess what I'm building? What? I mean, the, I mean everything. Like it's it's it is the navigation system. Fuck yeah! So what do, what do you mean he gives you access to just the back end or what? No, like he's he's working on something. Get this, he's working on something bigger, and he's got this beautiful thing that no one's using. Mm -hmm. And then Mr. Circle Guy says, "Hey man, well, let me use it for a bit. You know, get me in." So I'm in. I got access, mm -hmm. and fuck man, it's the plan. Like it's it's because it's it's the navigation through, but you can keep, you can create sequencing. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's, it's like the mycelium. It's the thing that connects like all the different pieces together mm -hmm. and that we will have the, like, if I, I think you'll go along with it, there's going to be kind of like the same thing. Here's inflow matrix and here's the rest of whatever you want to do. But this is, this is going mean, to be if it's not a thing, maybe we just acquire it. If you know, maybe we can just be like, what's the acquisition cost. If you're not using it, nobody's using it. It's a dead technology. Why don't we just buy it? Well, it could be that, like, I think we can arrange just to share technology where he gets a percentage and we do the marketing. And or we could just that. do that, yeah. Yeah, because I, I think, and I already pitched him on that. I already pitched him basically, so I'm hoping to talk to him this week. I'll, uh, let me, I need to just sit down and put all the pieces together and send to you exactly kind of like all these pieces and then you need to sort of give the feedback and shit on, okay. on on how how do we link it then into the TikTok? Because I think you I agree with the TikTok, and we yeah. need to. Um, I've been waiting because I've got like four really shitty videos on TikTok, <laughs> <laughs> and I got like I, I'm I, not I'm not very profound on TikTok right now, so I'm not going to talk shit either. Yeah. Uh, so we need to like, and I've just been thinking. You're right. We need to get very structured, like on a daily basis, around like. How are we going to unfold it, a series or sequence? Um, yeah, because I guess I, what I'm, I'm hitting a point where I, like, I'm just not inspired to like build my personal brand in the same way. Because I just don't care. You know, it's just like, I just don't care. I don't have the energy for it. I don't have the will. I'd rather sit in the forest and meditate. I really would. So it's like, unless we're building something like a show where we're all part of and we're like funny and creative and having fun, like, I just don't have the vibe for it. Well, well, I mean, you're at some point, it's pretty hard to promote yourself if you're on the spiritual path, right? It's like, <laughs> at some point, it's like, uh, I, I can't, uh. <laughs> so do you know what I think is good is I think we need to make fun at Bollywood. And I think we need to have you as some as, as you need to be structured in a lot of different ways. But I think part of the Ramayan thing is, is, a, is, a, is a Bollywood star, but who's in Canada. Mm -hmm. you know so there's it's not you don't That's quite work, you try to get canadians to do your your dances but they don't quite get it or at the worst times they do get like i think if we put canada and bollywood together that's got a lot of good humorous angles that's funny oh i'm excited for that <laughs> yeah, you get, think... like we bring in the dance like look at all the things you've done mm -hmm. and we bring that in because a lot of things you've done have not got the time and attention they needed you know like i think there's a so we need to bring together everything we've done and so well, package it. Okay. Now another layer to this. Veeam. Mm. Okay. Um, Veeam is really reformatting and really restructuring right now. We've got a new development team. We have a very, very simple, like, you know how you've simplified what you've been building and you've simplified it to one core tool. We've simplified our to one core tool now, which is we're building a decentralized clip library right. of the most funny clips. Only the most funny clips get vetted in there. 
anybody can come and rebeam them and create their own remix from that clip and put it out. And, you know, we're creating a whole system for that because TikTok is take a piece of audio, make a video to it. We're saying take a piece of video, remix it and put it out. And what is going to be the most, so that's coming out and we're going to have our own app. Whenever we have our own medium, it's yeah. different. It's different than having a channel on TikTok. For sure. Right. And so I think we've got to kind of get back into the mindset of what does it mean to have our own medium? And I love your input of how you see like in a very simple user interface, maybe it's categories, maybe it's, I know we were jamming on this before of like the steering of that. Well, I, I think we got to look at, okay, how is Veeam and TikTok going to connect? Yeah, um, well, I, I, here, here's how I think it's going to connect okay. is that people are going to post their Veeams on TikTok, one. Um, because it's good content. And number two, I think people who have really viral video meme like clips are going to upload them from TikTok to Veeam uh -huh. to, to have them re -beamed. Because if you have like a funny thing or an animal like grabs something from somebody, I'm like, oh, you could put a thousand different pieces of text on that or whatever, and it can mean a thousand different things. Those type of clips will end up on Veeam. Well, is, is, do you know what I, I would like to do or love to do? Yeah, would would be for you to sort of create uh, a place in the clip library or the server, yeah. whatever it is, right? Give me some room, let's say, okay, just to make file folders, just just for me to sort of go, okay, if I was going to do this, how would I do this? Yeah, and let me start because I mean, you know, I'm fucking, I'm going through, I am collecting info. I'm I'm like this, yeah. like a massive uh, amount of media's coming through me. And I want to see, okay, well, what's the process yeah. of me going, what's going to be valuable? Yeah. For me, for the others, I'm getting it, the whole thing. Okay, so, well, if you're going to do that, I'm totally down. Um, take a look at Giphy, G-I-P-H-Y, Giphy. They are, they, they've created, I think, the best category system for GIFs. Now, I, I think, of course, our category system is going to be different, but I'm just giving you reference points, right? Okay. Like you know, what to reference and then what's different about what we're doing in terms of how we're creating those categories. Okay. Okay. Because um, what I'm thinking about with Veeam is that the next stage is going to be creating, um, you know how Reddit, you use you, you Reddit at all? I, I haven't been a big Reddit person. Surprise. I, think, I would think that you would be, I mean, that would be your forum to be honest, because it's just a forum and people post information on all sorts of subreddits. I mean, I could see you posting so much of your inflow stuff on specific subreddits and probably the place you get way more traction than Facebook, like a thousand times. Facebook is dead. I really think you should switch to Reddit, by the way, but just a side note of this whole conversation, like please go to Reddit and research some Reddit r slash, because r slash systems change, r slash probably planetary guardians even exist. Like go to r slash, there's so many sub communities that exist around specific contexts and themes that you could just drop some of your things in. If people like it, they upvote it. And if they upvote it, it goes viral and it just becomes a whole thing. And I think some of your stuff definitely could do really well there. Okay. Um, but what I like about Reddit is that it has this kind of like forum, right? So I was thinking of what is our V slash, like Veeam slash any subcontext or any subcategory. So it doesn't have to just be clip library organization. It can actually be an MVP two or three when we allow people to create communities or groups, right? How, like how that occurs. Well, this this is uh, like this new, this new, um, what does it call it? Anyway, the new software system forces you to think in a certain way and organize info in a certain way, right? So the each software system forces a new way of seeing the information. But to me, it's it's the movement between them all, you know, and then how does that link into sort of like your artistic expression and then the story, right? Like our thing in terms of the very secret plan, how does it link into the story? Exactly. That's because what I'm at thinking. Some, at some point, the story should be the funnest thing and, mm -hmm. and, and having people watch us and participate and then have this growing story, right? Which is us taking over the planet, which I think a lot of people could be into, mm -hmm. right? Like, I mean, us being the, the big us, you know? The, yeah, the big us. I certainly don't want to take anything over. I, <laughs> I, I uh, <laughs> you know, I think you got to find your place. And you I, do, I and I'm telling you, the, the whole growing older thing, it's definitely a thing in terms of being like, oh, this is a big fucking world. <laughs> like, a lot of influences and a lot of players. And I think, why I like the very secret plan so much is because of why I like Veeam so much. 
because it's inherently a meme that can spread so virally that if you ascribe to a certain value system, if you ascribe to a certain whatever, that code, maybe we need to write the very secret plan kind of code of ethics or like, like I think we should need to have like something where, like what does it mean to participate in the very secret plan? I think we need to have like a little bit of that and it's like on a scroll and like you pull apart the scroll and it's like the 10 commandments of the very secret plan or something like that, right? And it's like, the thou, you know, thou shalt always use humor to express thou points. Like, you know, you know, thou shalt always serve good, except for when serving good is serving evil. Then don't serve evil, serve good. You know, like something, like, you know, like uh, some good nonsense. <laughs> exactly. It's like, but the like funny, but encoded. And each one of them are like basically saying, "You're here to be benevolent. You're here to be a systems change agent. You're here to connect with other systems change agents." You're here to be able to use the obliqueness and the comedy. We're going to use all those, but we're going to embed them in these like commandments that are like the very secret plan commandments, of, like what it means to join the show, right? And then if there's like an online decentralized asset folder that anybody who like joins the plan can access, and we can always upload stuff to that asset folder where they can always like use these assets at any point in time and everybody has access to it. The vault. That's the vault. That's the vault. The exactly. Vault. Yeah. So we need the vault and uh, we can get it stored on a decentral. We don't need to use Google or anything like that. We can use an IPFS completely decentralized server for it. Because hmm. right? to me, it's, it's, it's not like there's so much stuff that is known, but it's knowing what is the valuable stuff and, and how does it connect together and how do you build your own internal library? Because I mean, essentially we're creating a learning system, right? The, mm -hmm. the AI is us, you know, using the tech to, to become smarter in how we interact with the world. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. I mean, and that's the thing which I think you you have in your heart is you want to have the tools work towards some thing rather than just have the tools make you money or have the tools have a whole bunch of funny uploads that people are using, but who gives a shit about, you know, really what's going on. You, you, want, you want something that's going to affect the, the primary issues that our species is facing because otherwise, what's the point? Otherwise, what's the point? Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, at some level, it will automatically just because of the nature of a medium like TikTok. Um, but I want to, you know, we get to steer and that's the benefit of having a tool is you get to steer essentially. Right. And like, I always see beams as that, like tape head thing where it's like, it's a coyote medicine. It's like, it's going to be the Trojan horse where you'll never see it coming. You'll see it coming from planetary guardians. You'll see it coming from unify. You'll see it coming from all these other places, which are explicit, mm -hmm. but veem or the very secret plan are these things that you just won't see it coming from, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> Because we have lots of people in strange places that are on our <laughs> side. <laughs> and I think it's what the youth need, man. The youth need something like a very secret plan. What? Yeah. They really do. Okay, so um, I think I might go down to the drum circle at uh, Third Beach. Nice. I, haven't, I haven't been out of the house in years. Um, so what, what do we... What's the next step here? Oh, I, I, my next step is I need to put together the very secret plan stuff together yeah. and then send to you for you to, to, to have a big laugh at. And, no. um, and then- I think, to, I think we need to create an assets list. Like, you know, at least from our side as well, of like, okay, if we had a set of assets that were being used for us and for everybody else and like transitions, intros outros titles fonts graphic packs like what, what is the asset list almost like a meta brand guide i've done so many brand guidelines now i know how to do this okay so it's like a brand guideline and an asset guideline bring on a videographer bring on some people and like that needs to be created then we need to do some experimentation amongst a core group of us so we need like a beta group for the very secret plan right um and we need to experiment um i think we need to do rec certain writing rooms of like you know, us creating some like narrative writing rooms of like what would be like a, a narrative thread. How do we start testing this out? How do we start testing the hashtag and the meme out? What does it look like to play with it? Um, I think that's where we start. I think like that's enough to start. I think sometimes we try to get too big in our heads and we don't do anything. Yeah. Let's, like, let's have fun with it. Let's play. Like ultimately, if we're not having fun. If we're taking it too seriously, we've lost. Yeah. Did you see? Did you see? Um... Oh, I didn't see it. Let me see. 
Do you see this one? Add sack of shit. <laughs> there was something that was, I was going to get killed for. It'd probably be this interface. I yeah. made I made all ten interfaces, and I don't know. Like I I like coming at it from a point of view of hey, we got some great evil news here. Some good things are happening. You know, like way to go. All right, we're exactly. about to this. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's probably part of your character. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd love to have. I mean, that's the thing, like for each of us to have like this may be too scary for people. I don't know. Like, that's what I'm worried about. No, um, I don't think it'll be too scary for people. No. I just, as long as you keep your comedy edge alive, it won't be too scary for people. Okay. Um, anyway, so I, that's just something I'm working on myself, like the beginning of a new character and a new sort of, I'm going to do 10 episodes. And, mm -hmm. and I think again, in this, in this, this uh, new way of doing it, you'll see like there's a really interesting way to organize info. So I'm just I'm just, just going to play a little bit more with it, and then I'll I'll uh, give you a show, and then uh, hopefully I talk to this guy this week and uh, can get a little bit more. Um, I think we'll, we'll. I think he's a definite software integration partner. Okay, cool. I'm excited to see what he has under his hood. And it's what he's so maybe... like it, it is so simple like. Basically, it's you've got an interface, and you've got a circle that you can drag and drop into a, the bigger circle, and then each oh, of those sounds people, fucking familiar. It's, it's the same thing. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the exact same thing. But the thing is, like before, he had like ten buttons or whatever, and, and I had like ten for the inflow. But it doesn't even matter. You just drop and you bring in the circles. Like the amount of circles dictates the the geometric relationship. And then you just go into it and then you can just dra drag and drop your thing. So it's this continuing, it's, it's fucking pipeland, man. Yeah, it's, cool. it's like the scary cool. thing is it is pipeland, some interface with whatever that is. Cool. So anyway, anyone watching, you won't know what we're talking about and good. Cause you don't want to know. <laughs> okay. So, so what, I got what I got to do. How about how about this? Why don't you come up with an assets list? You sounded like you had the whole assets list as you were talking. Like I should have just been writing them down. Yeah, I should come up with the asset list. And why don't we um, why don't we have a, a, another chat quick this week? Maybe in a few days. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Yeah, I just wrote down the deliverable. And did I tell you we have another, uh, we have an interface guy now. Um, and we're looking within two weeks to have that uh, chat room ready that we program the, and this guy's at a, at a higher level of interface design. He's what I've seen so far, I really like. Um, so that's another piece of, the puzzle of getting to, that can actually build a, an SKC of 12 people of 12 people. Mm -hmm. So that's another big, that. big piece of the puzzle. Yeah, it's huge, man. Okay, so uh, I guess we'll chat soon. Yeah, or man. Is something else you want to talk about? Um, maybe me and you. There's always so much to talk about. We could spend a week together, right? So it's just like, um, let me get the ping pong table and get you out here soon. I mean, once you go through, I know you're going through a whole content wave and creation wave, and you're in it. And I think I want to respect that. So, uh, at some point. Let's plan to be together in person. Yeah, I, I think we need to plan that out and sort of leverage it in terms of uh, we need to start doing some bigger people thing. I think you know, bring more people together, having very specific things to take them through. I totally agree. And uh, sort of using the tools to to utilize the the, the people together. I think. Um, and I, you know, my aim right now is get the card sets printed, get mm -hmm. the next level printed. Do you want some card sets? I'm. Uh, I'm printing 20. Yeah, I don't even know if I have a full card set. I have tons of maps. I found a whole box of maps, by the way. Okay. Yeah, but I would love, how much is a card set? 200. Okay, yeah, I'll go on. Um, but do you want some more, like more to give to people on your teams or anything like that? Or Yeah, maybe we'll get some for Veeam. That probably makes sense. Um, 
I could put like, what I'm doing is like Lori's getting 20 and she's putting her visionary hub logo on the front. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to order 20, then you could have Veeam on the front and then we could figure out a way to, um, or you can just planetary guardians on the front and then have as many just as you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me think about how many I can realistically get right now. for My team, I don't even have 20 people. Um, I'll get back to you on that. Okay. Yeah. What do I think needs a set right now? I'd love to get a set to Goggin. I think that'd be powerful. I think like Akemi definitely needs a set. I'd love to get a set to Luke Cullen. Um, I mean, anyone who could, you know, anyone who's got a, a tech partnership integration, to me, yeah. it's like the first step of them sort of understanding the Z plan. Mm -hmm. Anyway, think about it, because I've, I've got, I'm going to be ordering 40, 20 for Lori, 20 for Planetary Guardians, and then I've got my own people at that but um right now it, it's open so if we could order more too if it, okay uh, great yeah i'm seeing at least five right now in my head let me think of this more okay all right okay so you're doing asset list i'm doing a uh, very secret plan assets just gathering what you've got yeah as soon as i, I get that together meeting. then i'll i'll set up a meeting okay sounds good okay and Thanks then so. i think and just to me in terms of you know, the sort of like upping the priority or sort of like if very secret plan is the top, I like that. And that activates me at a higher level for that. And then that has me different towards my other projects, right? Like it's just very secret plan to me should be the number one. That's where the most fun is. It's where the most fun is. And it's like, it, it, for me, it's like, we just need to start doing it and allow it to evolve along the way instead of so many other things that we do like Veeam or your chat app. I mean, you gotta just, you gotta build the whole fucking architecture to actually get anywhere, to get to the next step. This, you don't, you can create a bare minimum asset list and we can play, we can play in the in an arena and a TikTok video doesn't go viral, who gives a fuck, create 30 more. It's like, there's no loss anymore. There's no massive production value that has to happen. There's no, you can just go. And so I, I, I like that. And I want us to get back into that mentality that we used to have a play. And I think this is how we engage the youth. What I want to do is I want to get some kids that are either in high school or just coming out of high school. They want a little job. They want to come participate. They're changed the world. People like these 15 year olds, they know how to use TikTok. That's what they love to do. They don't have any other skills. And we get them to follow us around and fucking just use our templates to create amazing shit. We got to onboard a whole gaggle of those youth. How, okay, well, how about, uh, cause I got a friend coming out in August. Uh, who's a teacher buddy of mine mm -hmm. and I was thinking of anyway I'm just that's a, a two-week time I'm just gonna for, for sure be on the road and doing something but I want to do something like really fun and good mm -hmm. and I and just as you're speaking I'm thinking about planetary guardian training you know if we could get a bunch of older people a bunch of younger people and just maybe head down to Fairy Creek or just get trained and then go to Fairy Creek or you know whatever it is but just uh, come up with something where we're actively organizing people yeah I want to like, I want to get a couple of youth who, it's like specific quality of people, you know, that I can be in and who got, who understand the zeitgeist of the culture and who just want to participate in the plan. We need the youth now. We were, I was the youth before, I'm not the youth anymore. We need the youth now. <laughs> now I'm the old guy. Jeez. Now you're the old guy. <laughs> <laughs> now you're the wizard i know okay well great spe speaking with you you too uh, congrats on your uh your uh anyway we won't speak about it um and we'll talk to you soon okay take care bro